What is going on you guys? This is Tech HD and today we're going to be taking a look at BenQ's laser TV projector. This is a V7050i and it is an ultra short throw 4K projector and I've been using this for over a month now and I've been loving it. The video quality and the colors are amazing for a projector and I can't just go back to a smaller TV screen anymore. So let's dive in, talk about the features of this projector, what it has to offer, talk about the specs and then I'll give you guys my overall thoughts. So now taking a look at what we get inside the box, we got the quick start guide and the installation guide, the power cord, the micro USB cable for the media streaming stick, the QS01 Google TV streaming stick, two remotes, one to control the streaming stick and the other to control the settings of the projector, and finally we have the projector itself. Taking a closer look at the V7050i, you'll notice on top there is a motorized sunroof design that automatically opens and closes when it's not in use to avoid dust buildup and exposing the lens. After opening the sunroof, you will see two eye protection motion sensors, so if someone is hovering over the projector, it will automatically switch off the laser light. There is also an ambient light sensor for the Lumi Expert feature, and we'll get into that in a bit. And on the bottom right, there is a capacitive power button. On the front, you have a beautiful fabric design, and behind that are two built-in 5-watt speakers powered by Trivolo Audio. On the right side, there are some ventilations along with two USB ports, one being specifically for the QS01 streaming stick to power. Taking a look at the ports, there are two HDMI 2.0 ports, one of them supporting ARC, there is another USB port, an RS-232 port, an optical port, and the power port underneath. There are also four adjustable feet which is highly needed for an ultra short throw projector. And finally, something that's really cool, there are two rulers to help with measuring the distance the projector needs to be in order to get the screen size that you like. Taking a look at the two remotes, on the Google TV remote you have the power button, the focus button to adjust the motor focus on the projector, there is also the keystone, the kids TV, source, and prime video buttons. There's also the 5 button navigator, the back, home, and Android setting buttons, and lastly there is the projector menu, the voice assistant, and the volume and mute controls. On the BenQ remote, there are the power buttons, the auto, aspect, and test pattern buttons. There is also the source and default buttons and the five button navigator. Then we have the back and menu buttons. And then we have our preset buttons for the projector like your picture mode, HDR, cinema master controls, filmmaker mode, 3D, and invert. And then finally, there are the picture quality adjustment keys like the brightness, contrast, dynamic iris, which is not supported with this model, unfortunately, the control temperature, color management, light mode, gamma, sharpness, and the eco blank button. Lastly, on the side of the remote is a key light button to turn on the remote control backlight, which is a feature that I love and wish it was on every remote. Now, setting up the projector with the screen is easy, but time consuming. It takes a bit of time lining everything up to the screen and messing with the height adjustment fee, but after that, you are all set. I try not to use the keystone feature since it will increase input lag. Now, you can start to log into your Google account and begin to enjoy some movies and shows. I also recommend going into your installation settings and adjust the motor focus to make sure that everything is nice and sharp. I love the design of the motorized sunroof, it is so beneficial when it comes to preventing dust buildup and looks professional when you turn the projector on and off. The eye protection sensor works great as well just in case someone gets too close to the projector for any reason. It will automatically turn off the laser light for a couple of seconds and then turn it back on when it doesn't detect anyone there. Now taking a look at the specs of the projector, it offers 4K at 60Hz with a brightness of up to 2500 ANSI lumens. It has a laser light source and has a lifespan of up to 20,000 hours. It supports screen sizes from 70 inches to 123 inches. It supports HDR10 and HLG and has a 98% DCI-P3 and a 96% Rec.709 color accuracy. All of this goes for around 3500 US retail. Now for this setup, I have the V7050i paired with a motorized floor standing ambient light rejecting screen from Vividstorm, specifically for an ultra short throw projector. And I made a full video about that, so if you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link down in the description below. But now with my experience, I love how the V7050i portrays its colors and details. The picture mode that it offers are bright, bright cinema, filmmaker mode, and DCI-P3. And for me, my favorite mode is the DCI-P3 because I want the most accurate colors and best contrast that this projector has to offer. So this mode provides the deepest contrast at lower brightness level. I also go a step further and go into the advanced tab and set the color temperature to normal for the most balanced colorings for white. I also adjust my color management and set my hue, saturation, and gain to 200, which is the default value on all of the primary colors red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and white. This will ensure that you get the 98% coverage of the native DCI-P3 color gamut. I also set everything in the Cinema Master to zero. This is more of a personal preference because I personally don't want any additional color retouch and add-on sharpness. You can mess with it yourself to see what it is for you. 
I do, however, set the brilliant color to 10, and that's because it provides a higher brightness in the midtone images while providing realistic and true colors. I also enabled the Lumi Expert because it automatically adjusts the gamma level based on what the ambient light sensor detects. Lastly, I set the lamp mode to normal, and that provides the full light source brightness. Now for HDR content, it's very similar with just a couple of different things. The picture mode is set to filmmaker mode because it disables all the post-processing and preserves the color aspect ratio, uh, colors, and frame rates, showing the content to the way that it was intended. Also in the advanced tab, I set the HDR brightness to negative two. I feel like certain scenes are too bright, so I set it to negative two just to keep it balanced, but you can mess with that yourself and see what you like as well. I also make sure that the wide color gamut is enabled. This is what allows for deeper black levels and a wide color space, complementing the DCI-P3 color gamut. And lastly, I set my light mode to Smart Eco, and that's because it adapts to the content brightness and it adjusts the lamp power depending on the scene. So it gives you deeper black levels in darker scenes and also provides enough power during bright scenes. Lastly, to make sure that the projector is receiving the most out of the HDMI ports, go to the System Setup Advanced tab, go to the HDMI settings, and select the HDMI EDID, and make sure that it's set to HDMI 2.0, so you can get the full 4K 60Hz signal. It should be set to that by default, but just to make sure. But that's how I have everything set up, and I've been loving how it all looks. Watching all kinds of movies and content on this projector has been amazing, and I honestly forget that I'm watching it on a projector and not a TV, and I feel like that's what you would want. I watch movies and shows on Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, HBO Max, Paramount+, and Prime Video, and everything looked great to my liking. The colors look vibrant while at the same time accurate and not looking washed out. The view angles is spot on, and so seeing it from a bit from the side is no problem when it comes to the colors. The contrast is also great for a projector, and I was surprised by how it looked. Of course, it doesn't beat an actual TV when it comes to deeper black levels, but it's still pretty doable and it does a pretty good job. You can see in some of the tests, the dark areas really get close to black and still look good and not like a washed out gray look, and you won't really notice it when there's a lot of stuff going on. It even looks better when you enable the Smart Eco light mode. Having this projector being native 4K is great, and it really shows the detail and sharpness of the scene like the sharpness of people's faces. Even in bright scenarios like when you have blinds open and outdoor light coming in, it's still doable. It does get a little bit washed out, I would recommend putting it in the bright cinema to get the highest brightness while still being good with color accuracy. When it comes to indoor lights, the projector still performs great and the colors and contrast are not affected at all. So in my opinion, 2500 ANSI lumens is plenty for an ultra short throw projector. The Android TV works pretty good. If you're used to a Sony TV before, then it's basically the same thing, and I like the layout of it and how quick and responsive it is. What I don't like is that there's no Netflix built into it, so I unfortunately don't use a streaming stick that's provided, and I instead use an Apple TV 4K. But it's good that BenQ provides you with the QS01, just in case you don't have an Apple TV or Fire Stick or Roku. Now the audio quality from the built-in speakers powered by Trivolo Audio sounded surprisingly good. They definitely sound better than built-in speakers from a TV and they are front facing and get pretty loud. The major thing that is lacking is the bass of course, but this projector has an optical port and an HDMI port with arc support so you could connect a soundboard or a receiver with home theater speakers like what I did. But with the built-in speakers are definitely doable and there are 5 modes, standard, cinema, music, game and sports. So now let's take a quick listen to what the audio sounds like. So cut right clear through. Rim clear, coming out. His people did not call him General or King. They called him Kukul Khan, the Feather Serpent God. Killing him will risk eternal war. He's coming for the surface world. Pereira hit by Hammers! Oh, what a goal! One of the greats! My word, this boy's a star! Four games, four goals at World Cup 2014, and that is one 
That must be up in lights. Brilliant. Just brilliant. A mark of the man. And instead... Lastly, this projector is not intended for gaming due to its high input lag of 83 milliseconds at 1080p 60Hz, but I had to try it out, and man, the quality and detail looks amazing, and seeing it on a big screen looks so sharp and vibrant with games that support HDR and 4K. You definitely feel the latency when it comes to fast-paced games like Call of Duty, Apex, and Halo, and I would recommend going with a BenQ gaming projector for that, like the X3000i, but it still looked great. I would say that this projector is more for story-driven games like God of War, Spider-Man, or even playing some Nintendo games where you don't need to try so hard and just relax and enjoy the quality of the game. Now a couple of cons I personally don't like, one being that the Google TV is a streaming stick and not built in, which is taking up an HDMI and a USB port and the cables stick out and it doesn't look that good and clean and the appearance wise and left with only one HDMI port. It would have been much better if it was built into the projector or even like what they do with the X3000i and the X1300i gaming projector have a hidden compartment with a spare HDMI port and a USB cable built into that. It would have been a much better option and it would leave two HDMI ports for a console and a Blu-ray player and the streaming stick doesn't even offer Netflix. So I don't even use the QS01 entirely and I just use my Apple TV. The other con is whenever I switch from SDR content to HDR, the screen will go black for a few seconds and then display the content. The audio will continue to be playing in the background and the black screen will be going on for like 5 to 10 seconds. The same thing happens if the content switches from 24Hz, 30Hz, and 60Hz, so watching movies and shows and going back to the home screen, it will continue to go black for a few seconds and it just gets annoying and I wish it didn't do that and there was a way to get rid of that. Lastly is the Smart Eco Mode. Though I love the feature and what it does, there are certain times when for some reason it shifts the color temperature to a warm tone and even the tint to more of a greenish tint and then goes back to normal. And I don't know why it does that, but it is noticeable and a bit distracting and even noticeable with subtitles. The text will go from white to warm white text and so sometimes I just need to switch from Smart Eco Mode to normal, but I wish it didn't do that to begin with. Hopefully that is something that could be fixed with some updates. Overall, I really love what the V750i has to offer, amazing picture quality and the color accuracy, the detail from 4K content and HDR footage is great, and even the black levels are doable for a projector. Even the design and appearance of the projector is clean and modern and would look great in anyone's media room or living room. They have a white option, the V7000i, to match with the white furniture. The next ultra short throw model that I would love for BenQ to come out with is a gaming laser TV projector with HDMI 2.1 ports with 4K of up to 120 hertz and have a low input lag and to offer Dolby Vision support as well. And with Google TV being built into the projector and having Netflix support. That would be a killer ultra short throw projector. But there you guys have it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below of the V750i and everything like I said will be linked down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. As always, it's Tech HD. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!